Welcome back to the Gore Guide, where we're on a journey to compile the definitive list of gore and splatter films. Today we're taking a look at the Swedish splatter comedy, Evil Ed. Can you tell which classic horror film gets referenced a lot in this one? Evil Ed is a Swedish film which was made in 95, but actually released in 1997. It's directed by Anders Jakobsen, written by Anders Jakobsen, Goran Lindström, and Krista Olsen. Starring Johan Rudebeck, Olaf Rodin, and Per Lofberg. Evil Ed is a pretty groundbreaking film, all things considered. Prior to it, there had never been anything like it made in Sweden, um, a country whose film industry had mostly consisted of RT and, let's be honest, boring movies. It's an obvious love letter to the horror films of the 80s and the splatter comedies of the early 90s, and it wears its influences proudly on its sleeve. But most importantly, it's a protest to the harsh censorship that was enforced by the Swedish Cinema Bureau, which diluted the film industry from 1911 to 1996. It's hard to say how much influence this film actually had on the country's decision to relax its censorship laws, but it did have an impact. And for that reason alone, it deserves to be honored as a cult classic. But does it have any more going for it than just horror film references and a satirical subject matter? Well, let's take a look and find out. After the horrific suicide of the previous employee, timid family man, Ed, a film editor who normally specializes in artsy European movies is hired by the sleazy head of the splatter and gore department. Ed's new job is to edit out all of the explicit gore and nudity from the Loose Limbs series of films. In this film, there's a scene where a woman gets raped by a beaver and then shot in the head with a bazooka. But as time passes and he sees more and more extreme images in his day-to-day -day life, his sanity starts to slip. As his hallucinations intensify, he becomes a danger not only to himself, but to everyone around him. This is dying time. One of the biggest standout things about Evil Ed is the references. The title itself is one of the more obvious ones. It could be a reference to the Stephen Jeffries character from Fright Night, or it could be one of the many obvious and not so subtle nods to Evil Dead, which are scattered throughout the film. There are a few scenes with Evil Dead 2 posters in the background. The trademark ground skimming camera work is used in a few places. The makeup for some of the actors looks a lot like the Deadites and Ash's well-known catchphrase is used later in the film. Groovy. But to top it all off, one of the main characters is called I'm Sam Campbell. A combination of Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, for those of you that needed an explanation. It's fair to say that Evil Dead is a major influence on Evil Ed. There are other obvious references as well. The comedy and incidental music are reminiscent of Brain Dead or Dead Alive. There's a scene ripped straight out of Halloween. There's a couple of nods to Reanimator. And there are several memorable quotes or references used from other classic films, such as Night of the Living Dead. I'm coming to get you, Barbara. Gremlins. <laughs> Legend. Taxi Driver. Are you talking to me? And Blue Velvet. Don't you fucking look at me! The gore has also helped as well. And what there is, is done really well. For such a small budget, the special effects and the filmmaking in general are really good. The effects are all practical and varied enough to keep the film interesting through most of its runtime. Another good thing about Evil Ed is the comedy. It's not as funny as it wants to be, but there are some genuinely amusing moments. Most of the humor comes from genre in-jokes with a lot of references that fans of the films will love. There are also some funny things in the background that you might miss if you don't have a keen eye. Like a lot of low budget films, Evil Ed was shot with no sound and everything was added in post. Although the film is Swedish, 
The actors appear to be speaking English and are dubbed with American accents, sometimes pretty badly. Hey man, relax. You shouldn't take things too seriously. Which is, of course, another reference, this time to the Italian genre films of the 80s. Bill Moseley even provides the voice of the killer in the film segments that Eddie's working on. Well, hey, don't thank me. Thank science. <laughs> and finally, I loved the ending to the film. It ramps up the action considerably by bringing in a SWAT team to infiltrate the hospital that Ed has laid siege to. Where's the problem? Cue some corny macho dialogue and some unfortunately bloodless firefights, but Ed's send-off is brilliant. It'll be included in the bloody section for those of you that are interested in seeing it. So let's start with the first thing that hits you when you put this disc in. The music that's played over the main menu, it's horrendous. It's some of the worst Euro pop dance crap that I've heard in a long time. But this use of overbearing music carries over into the main film as well. The incidental music that is used throughout is just annoying. It seems almost like a silent movie sometimes when the music's used to accentuate every little movement that's going on on screen. It's just too cartoony. Brain Dead or Dead Alive uses a similar kind of music but to much better effect. Overall, the never ending references get quite tiresome, especially the nods to The Evil Dead, where the film goes from playful homage to crazy fan territory. God, I love you. It might make a good drinking game, I don't know, but if you were to take a drink every time there was a reference said or seen on the screen, you'd probably end up in hospital getting your stomach pumped. If a script is written well, then you don't need to be constantly reminded about what the message in it is. And unfortunately, Evil Ed's script isn't very good. If you took out the references and the footage from the film within a film, you'd probably have about half an hour's worth of story. The characters aren't really very well written either. Be careful out there, Captain. He's extremely dangerous. Affirmative. Ed is obviously our main character, and Johan Rudebeck does a pretty good job, but he doesn't really have a lot to work with. Our sort of hero, Nick, the delivery boy. Um, that's because, um... Uh, I forgot. Pretty minor part in the film until about the last 10 or 15 minutes when his girlfriend gets taken hostage by Ed. It almost feels like the filmmakers realised that they didn't have a character to root for now that Ed had turned evil and they just threw something together. The pacing of Evil Ed is pretty uneven. After the explosive introduction, we have probably 20 to 30 minutes of character development, which is just frustratingly boring, really. It gets a bit more interesting once Ed's sanity starts to slip, but it's, it's still pretty slow. And when things do happen, they feel a little forced. The gremlin-like creature in the fridge, while I appreciate the effects and the idea, Fuck you, man. <laughs> doesn't really fit with everything else. And the scene where the two guys break into the house doesn't add anything other than to enforce Ed's slide into insanity and increase the pretty low body count. The film doesn't really get going until the finale when Ed gets committed to the insane asylum, but by then it's a little too little too late. For me personally, the biggest letdown was the amount of kills and the level of blood. Everything that I'd heard about the film built it up to be this big over the top splatter comedy, but it's not that funny and it's not that gory. It has its moments, but it's definitely no brain dead, which it constantly gets compared to.
are fired. My personal favorite kill in Evil Ed is, of course, Ed's glorious send off. Stay away from me. Rest in pieces, motherfucker. The amount of gore in Evil Ed was a lot less than I was expecting. Unfortunately, it just doesn't come close to the classics of the genre that it constantly gets compared to. The effects that are there are done well, but considering the filmmakers were trying to make a statement on the harsh censoring of sex and violence in movies, then it stands to reason that their film should have been a lot more over the top. So it gets two out of five for amount of blood and three out of five for quality of effects. Despite my negative points, I still enjoyed Evil Ed. It's a fun movie. And if I had seen it as a teenager when it first came out, I would have loved it, but I didn't. And unfortunately, it just didn't meet my fairly high expectations. It's very well made for a film with such a low budget. It's always fun spotting horror references in films, even if they do get a bit tiresome here. And the message of protesting harsh censorship is an admirable one. I really wanted to love it, but it's all just a bit too middle of the road. So Evil Ed gets three out of five stars. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on Evil Ed or if you have any requests for future videos. There's a link in the description for anybody that wants to purchase a copy of the film for themselves. Join me next time when we'll be taking a look at Planet Terror. There's a link to the trailer below along with a link to my list of films on Letterboxd. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the bell to keep up to date with new content. Thanks for watching and until next video, have a bloody good time.